a white guy from Long Island, huh? How you doing tonight? Boy, did you ever have one of those nights you didn't want to come out, but your hair looked too good to stay home? I'm feeling good. A little, I'm a little depressed, but uh, I lost my job this week, which is sad because I'm self-employed. <laughs> I started my own business and finally I just had to let myself go. It wasn't working out. <laughs> now, you know, it starts out strong. You start doing the work, then you don't start showing up for work. <laughs> Coming in late on Friday. And then the final straw that really pissed me off, I called in sick and found myself at the mall three hours later. <laughs> I said, enough of this shit. I'm sorry, Jack. Sit down. It's not working out. I can't say I didn't know it was coming. I wasn't stupid about it, I gave myself a nice uh, severance package, you know, I mean, no. But the uh, boy was I glad to see me go, I was one of the worst employees I ever had. I had a job before that where I worked, and uh, I actually had two jobs during the day. One of the, one of the day, one of the night, this is absolutely true, during the day I sold cemetery property, and at night, I did house refinancing. So I had one card that said, Jack Simmons, I can put you in a hole or get you out of one. <laughs> When I get home, I have a uh, friend's dog I'm watching, one of these mixed breeds, very temperamental. I don't like this dog. I love dogs, but this dog I'm scared of. He's a mixed pit bull St. Bernard. What he does is he bites the shit out of you, and then he goes for help. <laughs> so I am Irish. Any Irish people here? Yes, the Irish people have a great attitude towards life, but even a better attitude towards death. You have been to an Irish wait, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Irish attitude towards death, look, he was born, he lived, and he died. Now it's Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> I have had weights in my family, five dollar cup and three drink minimum. <laughs> you die on Wednesday? Ladies, drink free! Ladies, come on down! Between you and me, folks, you know it's going to be a great wake when you walk into a funeral home and get your hand stamped at the front door. <laughs> it was Uncle Leo that died. I'm not surprised he died. This, this guy was. But you ever know one person who maybe shouldn't touch alcohol, especially in an Irish family? There's always one that shouldn't go near alcohol. This was Uncle Leo. The guy, the guy when, he, when he drank, he made stupid decisions. He spent five years building a log cabin and realized he used Duraflame logs. <laughs> Cabin burned down last month in exactly three hours. <laughs> One of the prettiest fires you ever want to see. But I have five brothers and one sister, that's Irish, of course. Um, my parents were parents. They didn't have time to be our best friends. You know, this whole thing, uh, be your child's best friend. I was talking to my mom one day, we were watching TV, the guy's being, you know, holding a book. Be your child's best friend. I said, yeah, mom, how come you didn't treat us that way? She said, let me ask you something. Do you think if you weren't our children, we'd want any of you as a friend? <laughs> I mean, I remember talking to my dad. 50th anniversary. You know, my dad was a New York City fireman, very tough guy, we're working, working, working. My mom stayed home every day, you know, took care of us. My dad was out working. And so I remember talking to my dad one day, I'm saying, Dad, when you look at this, you're married 50 years, you have seven children running around, you're with the same woman. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. That, what was it that kept you together? Was it, was it the love? Was it the compassion? Was it the humor? Was it the sex guy? What was it? Was it the family? He said, oh, it was the family. I said, really? He said, yeah, none of us want custody of you bastards. <laughs> Backyard, they were talking about the certain anniversary of baby Jessica, and that little girl who was in that hole in Texas. I said, Hey, Dad, is it a great thought baby Jessica survived in that hole for three days? I've been in a hole 55 freaking years, bro. <laughs> and it was like that. It was like that being 
raised, you know, in a large family. That's what it was like. And, and everybody, you know, we, then my dad taught us lessons of life. He said, son, it's great to be in love, but it's better to be in debt. This way you know somebody's always thinking about you. <laughs> You have not paid your bills for a couple months, they call you for that phone call. Oh, Mr. Simmons, you haven't paid us for three months, you owe us $600. When can we expect payment? Hey, you can expect it anytime. <laughs> when you get it, that's a problem. You can sit around and expect it all day Monday if you like. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be there. Why don't you expect it? <laughs> so I, took, I guess if you're raised in a large family, um, because you're not treated special, you grow up with a, you don't have a sense of entitlement. So it's not hard for me to be happy if I don't have everything, because I never came close to having everything. And I look at life this way, you know, I say, God, you know, whatever you have, be happy. There's always somebody that has less. I know it sounds like a cliche, but if you take one thing tonight, remember this statement, it'll always put a smile on your face. Don't feel sorry for the guy that has to drive a 1979 orange Pinto. <laughs> feel sorry for the guy that has his eye on one. Because <laughs> at least we're free. We are free. I did a show in prison a couple years ago. Scared the hell out of me. I, that's the, one thing I couldn't take is being in prison. I can't imagine just sitting there. You ever watch those shows? How do they do it? Just sitting there, day after day after day, just waiting for your time to be up. You know? Then I thought, you know what probably the worst night in prison is? At night they set the clocks back an hour. <laughs> of course, eight months later, the clocks go forward an hour. It's just great unless you being executed that morning. <laughs> Imagine that your last day on Earth is daylight savings time. <laughs> they come to get you at five instead of six. What are you guys doing here? Spring forward, fall back, Jody. Let's go. Because <laughs> that's the way life is sometimes. All of a sudden, you know, things just happen like... Like, look, my friend's getting married now for the fourth time. He's 50 years old, he's getting married for the fourth time. And, 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 and most people are just like, well, you know, that's unusual, but like, Larry King's married eight times, you know, and somebody else was married nine times, Elizabeth Taylor. I don't know, folks, maybe I'm old-fashioned about this, but I think if you're married more than two times, they should change the vows. <laughs> but really, instead of saying, I do, you should say, you'll do. <laughs> Here comes the subpoena. <laughs> I was married to a woman from Iran. Yeah, that's what I should have said at the altar too. Complete silence. That's exactly what I should have done. People say, why would you marry a woman from the Mideast? I'll tell you why. I slept with the enemy so you didn't have to. <laughs> Whoa, that was tough. You got divorced after a couple. Oh man, that was brutal being married to a woman from a different culture like that. Especially because she's from where she's from. You know, we would have fights and I would forget. Don't forget where she's from. And the next morning I'm out there sobbing up my car going. Like a lot of people, after we uh, got divorced, I started going through the dating sites. I think I went to Plenty of Flesh. Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you never know what you're going to get. You just you have no idea what behind people's eyes. There was this one girl I started communicating with, and we made plans to get together. And she said, listen, I know how expensive it is to date. Why not come over? We'll have a beautiful night. I'll cook dinner. got a beautiful TV. We'll have a fireplace. We'll have a great time. So this goes on for like two or three dates. One night I said to her, you know, really, I didn't think women like you existed anymore. You know, old-fashioned. She said, no, I'm not old-fashioned. I'm under house arrest. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. 
story the day people be because she was wondering, well, what's their history like? What have they done? What have they done in the past? And everything. What I do is if I want to know about somebody's history, very simply, I go through their medicine cabinet. <laughs> you do, you've done it. <laughs> you've done it. See, you look at somebody's medicine cabinet and you find out exactly what it is they have, what they've had, and they can tell you. Because most people would be embarrassed to tell you about things. I opened this girl's medicine cabinet one night, it was empty. I said, shit, I don't know what she's got, whatever it is, there ain't no cure for it. <laughs> and you know, you just realize, all of a sudden, your life around you, all of a sudden, you realize you've gotten older and things have moved on, but in such a subtle way, and here's an example. There's a certain word out there called suck that's used all the time now. I heard on TV the other day, one of the news reporters used that. She said, oh, you know, someone so sucked or something. I don't know. I just felt like that word to me meant something so different when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? See, today if you say, she sucks, it's an insult, it's a put down. When I was growing up, it was a rumor. She sucks? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I'm not... That, and I think the music you listen to, like, you know, you're getting older. Every time you go buy music, everything you want is marked down to $1.99. <laughs> Time Magazine did something a couple months ago. They said the baby boomers will soon be the senior citizens. How is that for scary? Imagine that, sitting around a nursing home 35 years from now, holding hands, saying, stay away to heaven. <laughs> How's that going to sound on the accordion? <laughs> Come on, everybody, put in your teeth for this one. There's a lady who cured all that glitter did. Oh, oh, oh. Walking along the park, he came, whip it, whip it, whip it. to smoke. Now you try to smoke? Boy, you're a dead being. Boy. I feel sorry for smokers. I really do feel sorry. I don't smoke. I smoke a cigar once in a while. I don't smoke cigarettes. I think that's why we, we should continue space, space exploration. So we find a planet and say, okay, now you can smoke. Because well, yeah. you certainly won't be able to do it on Earth much longer. No, you won't. It's, 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 going, it's getting out of hand, you know. I love what I say when you can't smoke, chew gum. You ever heard that? I feel, I, I, how do you make that connection? You can't smoke chew gum. That's like saying, I really want to have sex right now, but since I can't have sex, just give me a high five. That'll take care of it. <laughs> we went through the whole craze with worrying about all sorts of diseases, so they tried to promote condoms. It didn't really work, did it? It didn't really work for obvious reasons. They didn't really have a good marketing campaign. They didn't quite know how to go out and to reach out and get that crowd. See, what I would have done if I was head of an advertiser, I would have combined condoms with the New York State lottery slogans, like, like Trojans, hey, you never know. <laughs> you gotta be in it to win it. All you need is a dollar and a dream. <laughs> and sometimes you see things and you just... I was driving on the Southern State Parkway uh, a couple Saturday nights ago and it was extremely, extremely rainy. You know how the weather's been, it's been horrible. And they have that thing that they flash and says, Slippery when wet. <laughs> And I go, what the hell is it, slippery when wet? That's the very nature of being slippery is it's wet. <laughs> it's like having a sign that says dark one night. <laughs> Watch out, that's hot when boiling. Watch out now. <laughs> Here's my favorite. You go past the school, it says drug free school zone. <laughs> Don't you expect to see a sign two blocks away and say, resume selling drugs? <laughs> You see the cop go, come on, buddy, get up. Get up two blocks off you selling drugs. You don't tell them here. This is a drug-free zone. <laughs> so my nephew just graduated from uh, college and went to be a businessman. I gave him a lot of credit. He's very ambitious. He goes, I want to make a million bucks. How do I do it? I said, look, man, I'll tell you what. You look at your generation and you come up with a service. 
they don't know they're going to need. So he's studying tattoo removal. Because <laughs> I can see that's where we're going, boy. You know, yeah, he goes, ah, you're old fashioned. You know, I go, you know what? You're probably right. You're probably right. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, one of my favorite toys I had when I was a kid was that little gas airplane made by Cox. You remember those? You saw him off 7.30 Saturday morning while Davis was sleeping. <laughs> It'd be real quiet all the city you here. I just got 
being down south, you know, and there's this little town called Op, Op, Alabama. It's really a town, it's called OPP. So I said to the guy, why do you have two P's? He said, well, first P is silent. <laughs> I couldn't believe I passed for entertainment, and off I walk over to the mall, there was a guy there autographing books he'd read. <laughs> and I didn't read slow, but I found a copy of The Cat in the Hat with a bookmark in it. <laughs> So I'm back, uh, I was out in Los Angeles for about 13 years, I just came back about a year and a half ago, and I uh, got to enjoy Long Island, and I see Long Island with a totally different set of eyes now that I'm older, and I can appreciate things I never could, and relative. And you know what, when you talk about Long Island to a lot of people who've never been here before, there was kind of one there. Hey man, this Long Island place, what's it like? You know that place where Joey Butterfield comes from and Billy Joel and... I said, oh man, you've never been to Long Island before, it's beautiful, man. We just around a little listen to Jimmy Buffett buckets all day long, drinking pina coladas. We're living on an island. <laughs> We're living on Long Island! Go back to the island. So much fun. I'm living on 